Hello and welcome everyone. So this video was originally supposed to be the weather project for a reason, but it turned out that setting up Webpack took a lot longer than I expected. So this video is about how to set up Webpack for your Reason application so you work with it like a normal React application. You're going to need the Bugglescript CLI or the BS platform installed globally, and you can do that with NPM. Because with BSB, we're going to generate a new project called Weather, and we'll use the React Hooks template. Once that's created, you can CD into it, and just install all of the packages using Yarn or NPM. And of course, we're going to open it up in an editor. I'm going to be using VS Code for this video. And you'll notice that we have an unused webpack.config.js. We're going to rename that to webpack.config.js, because I want to use Webpack for this project so that we could leverage it to use CSS files as well as image files. All right, so let's check package JSON and see what we have so far. We the webpack's not installed yet. We just we just have module serve. So that means we're gonna need to install some webpack stuff. I'm gonna install it as dev dependencies, but we need webpack, webpack dev server, webpack CLI, and just to get started, let's just get the HTML webpack plugin. We'll add the style and file loader later when we need them, but right now this should give us everything we need to start editing our webpack configuration. So first, let's import the HTML plugin and get rid of these comments. All right, so I'm gonna copy this line here and put it inside of its own variable because we're gonna be using it in more than one place. I think by convention, it's just called output dir and I want this to be a directory. So I'm gonna say build slash. Then we can add it back here in path. The entry files, fine. It's not super necessary, but if you end up doing deployment for production, you can edit the node environment. So Webpack knows to either build this for production or for development. And now we need to add a plugins array. So then we can use that HTML Webpack plugin. And this takes an object where template is gonna be this index HTML file here. It's relative to this file, so this is Fine, we could use a absolute path there. And we'll just do inject false here because we don't need to add extra dependencies to the HTML. And then the last thing we need in this configuration is the dev server object. And here's some default stuff. Content base just means where which directory we're serving our app from. And then port is the other important thing, which is which port it's gonna be serving on. And right now it's going to be on port 8000. Now we need to edit our template, which is the HTML file in here. Except we don't actually need all of this. Instead, we're going to change this script here to index.js. And that's referring to this file name here. Because it's going to be the entry file that Webpack creates for HTML or our index HTML. And let's also change the title because why not? Weather app. Now there's two files here that we don't need anymore. So index production.html and watcher. Because that's using the default build flow that this template gives you. The reason template, I mean. So let's just get rid of that. Now inside of source, let's also empty this out except for the index. And before I exit the terminal, let's also make an app. So in the usual stuff in our index file, we're just gonna do React DOM render the app component to a div named root, with the idea of root, I mean. And then an app, let's make a very basic component that says hello world. Now it is important to point out that we're using react.string here, and that's for a reason to know that this is a compatible string in our JSX. And then the last step is we actually need that a div with an idea of root so that we can actually render our application. For convenience, let's just change our npm scripts. I'm going to do webpack here or build so that we could compile both the reason code into JavaScript and then the JavaScript code into webpack code. And then we'll change server to just say webpack dev server. And that should read in our webpack config so it will serve correctly. So let's open up two terminals and run both the start command and the server command. And in our browser, 
we go localhost 8000 and see if everything works. And there's our hello world, so it works perfectly fine now. Okay, so let's go add those CSS and images that I mentioned. So of course we'll need the styles.css to test some stuff out. And I'm just gonna add some default styles. So just a reset of padding and margin on every element. And then for icons, we're gonna be using these weather underground icons. We'll be using the open weather map API and they have their own icons, but I don't really like the way they look. So we're gonna match the weather underground icons with these specific file names. And I've already done the work of adding all the icons and changing the names. So they're gonna live here in assets slash icons. Now we need to add the webpack loaders so that we can access all of these files that we added. We'll need style loader, CSS loader, and file loader. And we'll install those as dev dependencies. And then in our webpack config, we add a new property here called module. And then we'll add some rules, which is an array of objects. It takes a test, which is a regex for the file extension. And let's do the file loader first. So I know that all of our files are PNG, but just in case we add more, we'll have JPEG and GIF available to us. The loader is going to be the file loader that we installed. And I'm not really sure what the options of ES module is, but additionally, we need to do, add our CSS files. Nothing fancy, just CSS. I'm not going to add SAS to this project. But first, we need a style loader and the CSS loader. We need both of these because there are different types of CSS out there and we're using just a plain regular one. And I think that's it for our configuration. In our BS config, it's not super necessary, but I'm gonna change module from common.js to ES6, just so it's more Webpack friendly. And then lastly, we'll need one more file and I will call it utils.reason. So this will allow us to use the raw JavaScript of require so that we could import CSS and image files. And let's add our type annotation. With require CSS, I'm not gonna return anything. So this is gonna be a void function. So that means it's returning a unit in reason. But with image, we want the string to come back. And that's why we're gonna make sure that the return type is string. And then inside of utils, let's just add that s equals to react.string. And that's just a utility function that we can add. So inside of app, for instance, we can, op we can open up utils and replace react.string with s. And also in our entry file, we're also gonna open up utils, but this time we're just gonna require, we want styles.css. Now this is a good starting point. So let's initialize git. I know that I wanna add a couple things to git ignore. bs.js is one of them. And I know I want to ignore the build directory that Webpack's gonna create. I'll save that. And let's stage everything and commit an initial commit. Wow, this video is a lot longer than I expected. So I think we're gonna actually do all the reason code and create our application in another video. Instead, this video is just gonna be about setting up Webpack for our Reason application. I do hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time when we actually start working on this project.